Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullmoon Adventure Club and today we're going to be reviewing a very cool, if not weird, tent and it's called the Tensile Flight Plus. Now this was just borrowed uh, from a friend of mine so I could check it out, it was very, very cool. And um, I wanted to just do a quick review on it because it looked so neat and unique that I definitely wanted to check it out. At the end of my testing, I, I came to the conclusion that it's not for me uh, necessarily. I don't really like it, but you might. And it's kind of just weird, cool. I wanted to like it so bad because it's really, really cool. And uh, I like hammocks. Hammocks are nice. They're tons of fun. And this is kind of the same principle. It's a suspension system. So you can put this tent anywhere you like. You can, you just need three different anchor points, you know, kind of in a triangle and then you tighten everything up and you can put it over streams or up in trees super high if you want to or across canyons and weird stuff that uh, if you look at their video it's really funny all the stuff that they do with it and it looks awesome um, but let's go ahead and check it out real quick and I'll tell you some of the things I liked and didn't like about it okay so what's in the bag here we're gonna have our tent bag and then you're gonna pull out our uh, main strap right here with the ratchet attached this is gonna tighten everything down for us then you have your tent poles, two of those, and the other two straps that you're going to use to attach to the other two trees. In this little bag, we have kind of a little ratchet strap adapter there to kind of help you out. I didn't have to use mine. And then you're going to have the rain fly to keep the water out of the tent, and also the tent itself. Also three tent stakes, so you can kind of tent down your rain fly. Now setting this up, you just need to find three trees that are kind of in the right orientation to match up with all corners of the tent. And we're going to attach the two straps that do not have a ratchet. When it comes to the knot that's used for these, uh, it basically goes like this. You just kind of wrap it over once after it's through the loop. Let's get all the tension out of there. And then wrap it over one more time, which creates a little loop. And then you're going to pinch that in half and pull it through the buckle. And then through that little loop on the top and pull that loop tight. Now that's not gonna go anywhere until you pull on the main strap that's hanging down through the loop and that will release it. So very handy knot there. We're gonna do that for the other one. And now it's time for the main strap that's gonna have the ratchet. So we're just gonna run that through and pull it tight. Make sure we get everything kind of adjusted properly and then we're gonna ratchet that down and you're gonna ratchet this thing really, really hard basically until you can't ratchet it anymore and then make sure it's in the locked position. Now it's time to put in our poles. So we're gonna go ahead and get those two poles set up. We're gonna do this one first. Um, I'm doing it while it's in the air. You could do this on the ground before we start if you like. Um, but you basically just run that through the little loops and it's gonna go into two little PVC cups. And so we're gonna stretch that out and put those on. And then the main pole is just gonna go through this orange uh, guide right here and it's gonna go through the strap all the way across. And once you put that guy into the cup, it pops the tent right up into place and you're pretty much done. Now you can put on the rain fly, but I'm gonna skip that step as it's not raining and I just kinda of wanna show you. Now this is the one thing, I couldn't find a tree that should have been straight across from this corner of the tent. And as you'll notice, my tree is a little to the right. So that might affect the way the tent was used, but it's the only tree that I had, so I had to go off by a couple of feet. So now that we have all that done, we can fire up the drone and cue the epic music. So there we go. That was kind of my little spoof on the video that they have for this tent on Amazon. And if nothing else, you need to check that link uh, down below that takes to Amazon and watch the video for this tent. But now that you've hiked the Himalayas and you've biked across Europe and you slept in the rainforest and all the monkeys are your friends and you stacked this thing 20 tents high. It's a funny video. You guys see it. Um, now you're ready for this guy. And now I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that I wasn't really a fan of with the tent. Um, so I'm going to put up a video right here of me just getting into the tent and it's at about three and a half, four feet off the ground. Pretty high, I thought. About as high as I want to try and jump up into it. And uh, me being a really large guy, 6'5", real heavy, I uh, got in the tent and I'm, then all of a sudden I'm like a foot and a half off the ground. Now some of this I'm sure was contributed to my error because you have to have the perfect setup of trees 
to do this all in the right direction, all in the right angle, uh, perfectly going with every, every corner of the tent. And one of mine was a little bit off. And then another uh, tree that I used was, uh, you know, not a huge tree that's not gonna flex at all. It was a tree maybe this big around, you know, pretty decent sized tree really. But when you put that four feet up in the air, it's gonna flex a couple inches when you put all that weight on it. So me being a big guy plus not having the perfect setup of trees created a lot of sag and uh, made it kind of like a hammock, which I think would be kind of weird sleeping in at night. Um, but of course, some of those things weren't set up perfectly, but that's one of the things I don't like about it. You have to have the perfect setup of huge sturdy trees with no obstructions going to them. And uh, this also takes up a huge footprint. So if you're in a campsite and you set this guy up, you're gonna have drunk people smacking into your guy wires all over the place because it takes up a huge footprint um, with, when you incorporate the straps, you know, and I'll give you a shot from the air. That's a big space that it's gonna be hard for people to walk around uh, there at night, say. So that's another thing I'm not crazy about. You can set this up on the ground. I mean, why couldn't you? You could just do the straps with stakes and be on the ground but it kind of defeats the purpose and it's kind of a small tent. Um, I'm going to switch over to a little footage of me just being around inside the tent with the GoPro so you can see me inside of it and what it's like inside the tent. And also this is considered a two person tent. I think I was laying in it the wrong way. My head probably was where your feet are supposed to go. And then where it comes up, you have a person in each little corner with their feet kind of meeting in the middle and you're playing footsie all night is probably the way it goes, but it doesn't matter. As long as all your straps are level, you can lay in it however you want, really. But let's jump in there and check it out and see what it looked like inside. Okay, so this is me inside the tent here. It's, it's a little small, I think, for me, but I'm 6'5", so, I mean, I do fit. I mean, my head's right here in kind of the top corner, and then if I swivel you around, you can see that my feet can go either direction of the straps but not so much in the middle because i'm way too tall so if you want to lay straight on your back it's very doable here i am i just feel like i'm in a hammock kind of rocking around here and my feet can go down there and everything's just fine or if you go on your side which is probably how i'd end up sleeping uh, then yeah I, I, I guess this used to be okay with my pillow up here and my blanket and stuff, but uh, it's a little on the small side for me. And I wonder if my straps aren't misaligned and that's why there's a lot of sag in the middle because the strap's supposed to go straight out to a tree and it's not. It's a little at an angle and I'm sure it has to be set up just right. But that's kind of a downside, isn't it? If you don't have the exact perfect setup of trees, three trees, then uh, you might be a little cattywampus in here. But it's neat, and it's set up a lot faster than I thought it would. So yeah, now you can be 30 foot up in the air and try and get into your tent somehow. Uh, or for me, I thought I put it too high, but once I got in here, I'm such a big guy. I'm only a foot or two off the ground. And I think I started at about three and a half feet. So there's a lot of sag, but uh, yeah, now I'm a little bear burrito. Okay, so for me, obviously, like this wouldn't be a practical tent for me to buy to sleep in. Um, if, if you're a smaller person and you're a lower weight, this might be fine. And again, like I think kids would have so much fun in this thing. They would love it. I wouldn't buy this tent for myself, but if somebody gave it to me, if I got to keep this one, I probably would have it in the RV all the time just so I could set it up and let like, you know, my friend's kids and stuff play in it. Or even as like a little hangout spot for uh, the ladies, like reading some books and you could put it over a little, right next to a babbling brook or whatever, that'd be pretty cool. But another thing that I'm not crazy about and what they really, you know, say is the coolest thing about this tent is that you can put it anywhere you want. You can put it over a stream and your door's looking out under this awesome river or waterfall, but how do you get in the tent when you do that? Um, you have to crawl across the stream or try and jump from the bank into the tent. Uh, so that's kind of strange. And then they also show this tent being stacked up multiple layers. You know, some of them were like 20 feet off the ground in the trees. And again, how do you get into the tent once you get it up super high or off some cliff or some really tall tree? Do you have to climb the tree and then 
cliffhanger your way over to the tent and then try and pull yourself into it. That's kind of weird. In the video, they show people like slacklining out there like on a tightrope to get into the tent. And I'm sorry, that's just not practical for me personally. It's a very cool idea. But I think those, those little things were enough for me not to recommend it uh, for those reasons. If your situation is different or you do want to try this out and do it, it's, it's a very cool idea. And I really wanted to love it. But to be honest, I just wouldn't be comfortable in there. And I'll just take my, my normal Coleman and set it up on the ground. It's nice and flat and big and square. And uh, I'll have my little thermal pad or whatever, you know, for a little bit of cushion and I'm good. So, I mean, it's really up to you, but I, I had to do the review on the, on the tent while I had it. And I had a lot of fun setting it up and trying it out, um, but it just wasn't for me. I will put a link in the description below and you have to go there if nothing else to watch that video. And, uh, you know, with all the monkeys and stuff playing in it and how cool it is. And if you're interested to check out the price and the other set of tents, there's another kind of tent like this called the Tensile. It's not the Flight Plus. This one's smaller for backpacking or lighter weight. They have a big one that I think they show in the videos and it looks like it's a lot sturdier and I think it would probably work a lot better, but I can't get my hands on one. So um, we'll have to wait for that review. As far as the full Flight Plus goes, uh, it's too small for me. But anyway, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. I hope you enjoyed this little review of the Tensile Flight Plus, and I'll put that link down below for you. If you liked it, please like, share, subscribe, and until the next video, thank you so much for watching, and happy camping.